Hi, welcome to the Interwoven Studio channel. This is the macrame we're going to make today. I'm going to take you step by step through the process. This one does take a little while. It took me about eight to 10 hours. So I hope you're on board for that. The cord I'm using for this project is four millimeter single strand macrame cord. Pick whichever cord you like. Um, if you want to use the same cord that I'm using, go ahead and take a look in the description below and I'll provide a link for you. So let's just get started. So let's start by attaching 36 cords to the dowel using the lark's head knot. To do the lark's head knot, fold your cord in half equally. Take the two ends behind the dowel over the top and then down in the front through that loop and pull that down until it's snug. So do this knot to attach all your cords to the dowel. Next, we're gonna do a row of square knots across the top of the wall hanging. Normally, a square knot's done with four cords, but I'm gonna do it with eight to give it a little bit more of a chunkier look. I'm gonna quickly go over how to do a square knot. If you already know how to do one, just zip ahead. So we're gonna do this with eight cords. You're gonna take the two cords on the left, pass them over top of the four middle cords. Now take the two right cords over top of the cords you just brought over, around the back four middle cords and then through the loop and then pull that snug to the top. Now to finish the square knot we're going to do the same thing from the opposite side. So take the two cords on the right, pass those over the four middle cords. Now take the two cords on the left over top of the two cords you just brought over, around the back of the four middle cords and through the opening and then make that snug to the top again. And now continue on and do that all the way across the top and you'll have nine square knots in the end. So now we're gonna do this pattern at the top with the square knots. So essentially we're adding one more square knot per column until we get to the middle. And after the middle, then we'll start decreasing by one. So on the left, we'll have two square knots on top of each other, then next over three square knots, and the next four, and so on. And do this to the other side. So now on the sixth column, decrease by one. And on the far right, you'll just have two again. Now we're gonna do double half hitches. They sometimes are called double clove hitches. We're gonna start them two inches below the square knots above, and on this angle, kind of like a low sloping angle to the middle, and then we'll do the same thing from the right to the middle to create this kind of point or low sloping V. The double half hitch knot is a little bit of a trickier knot, so I'm just gonna pop a link up on the screen here if you want a more in-depth tutorial. To do your double half hitch knot, the cord furthest left, that's gonna be the filler cord, and all the other cords are gonna work around it. For every cord, we're gonna wrap it twice around the filler cord. So you have your left cord, that's the working cord. Take the next cord over, bring it around and over the working cord, and then through this opening and, and pull it. And now do the same thing. Wrap it around again through the loop and make it snug. And that's what we're gonna do for all the cords across. So now do these double half hitches on the angle, keeping it two inches below from above, and do that until you reach the middle. So you're doing these double half hitch knots on a parallel line to the square knots above. If you wanna make sure you're maintaining that two inches of the same angle as the square knots above, use your measuring tape when you hit the second column of square knots and see that you're still two inches. And then you can do the same thing when you start underneath the third square knot. Do another measurement. Once you're at the middle, start on the right hand side and go from the right down to the middle again. And then you're gonna join that point with one more double half hitch knot. So I stopped a little bit before reaching the middle. I was just looking forward what to do next. So I'm just gonna tie these ones up 
and now I'll join in the right side. Start and stop, take it apart if you need to practice it a little, this is a trickier knot. So when you're joining that point, it doesn't matter which side, but use one side as the working cord and the other side as the filler cord and just seal that tip. So now I'm just gonna go back up to the top where we did the lark's head knots and just adjust the spacing slightly so it all looks nice and aligned. Now we're gonna do this textured section, and to do this, we are actually doing it with square knots, but they're called ruffled square knots. So to make your first one, we're gonna do this now with just four cords for each square knot. So about two inches below the double half hitch row, we're gonna do a square knot, just like we did before, but with four cords instead of eight. So take the one left cord over the two middle cords, take the right cord over that cord, around the back, and through the opening. And now go from the other side, take the right cord over the two middle cords, take the left cord over that cord, around the back, and through the opening. So make that one snug so you have a nice square knot. Now you're gonna hold the two middle cords, and now grab the square knot and push it up. So now you're gonna see you're gonna get these two loops on the sides and that's your texture. And as we're going along, you wanna make sure you keep those loops to the front of the macrame. So we're gonna do these ruffled square knots in an alternating square knot pattern. So go below the one you just made and now skip the first two cords and now make another ruffled square knot, again, two inches below, because then you're gonna push it up and it's gonna give it that nice um, textured side. So we're gonna go down to the next row again, and this time to continue the alternating pattern, we'll start from the outside. We won't skip two chords, and now you'll see each row, the square knots will be offset from each other. So we're just gonna continue doing these rows, adding probably about one more square knot per row until we get to the point, like the actual point of the diagonal half hitch. and then start on the right side and do the same thing working towards the middle till you get to that point. So now that the ruffled square knots have met in the middle, now the next row will start from the left and go all the way to the right hand side. Stepping the sides in to give that same angle as we've done with the double half hitches above. To create this angle, we're gonna step in or do one less square knot per row. The first one, we're actually gonna skip six chords because of that alternating pattern. So I'm skipping the first six chords, making my ruffled square knot, and now I'll continue across the width of the wall hanging, but stopping six chords shy of the other side. And now we go back to the left, and this time we're gonna skip 12 chords and start our ruffled square knots go all the way across and then stop 12 before the other side. So continue doing this row by row. So with this row, we're gonna skip 18 chords. This next row, we're skipping 24. And now this row, we're skipping 30. And this last row, we're only doing two ruffled square knots. So now we're gonna do the double half hitches again, just like we did above at the same angle. And to know I'm maintaining that four inch separation, I stop every once in a while and check my measurement. If you've strayed, you can just undo the cords and redo them. This is a typical part of macrame. Often you're undoing cords because you don't like them or something is off with them. If you keep checking with this four inch measurement, at the end, your cords will be nice and parallel to each other. The midpoint of your double half hitches is the 36 cord. So then you can start from the other side and going back towards the middle again, and then join your point like you did before. So about two inches below, we're gonna do the exact same pattern that we just did. 
So my second section is a little bit taller than the one above. The ruffled square knots are about four and a half inches in height. You can do that or you can just do it exactly the same as above, whatever you prefer. So now again, about two inches below, do that double half hitch low angle V and this row we're gonna use to attach our fringe. So we're gonna do the fringe with pairs of cords. So align two cords, take the one end and wrap it around a cord and then take the other end and wrap it around the cord right next to it. Pull them to the front and down through the loop and pull all the way down till it's snug and this is the Raya knot. And now we're gonna do this with pairs all the way across. At the very end, you're gonna have one cord on each side. So I am still gonna attach a layer of fringe and I'm just gonna use the outside two cords to do this. So now I'm gonna cut the lower level of fringe and you'll see the original cords, some are longer, some are shorter. Don't be worried about the ones that are shorter because this fringe is so thick you won't be able to see that there's shorter ones in behind. So I'm just going to cut this at the angle to match those diagonal half hitches. So now attach the next layer of fringe above the ones we just did and just offset it by one cord so they're staggered across. So now go ahead and trim this layer of fringe. Be careful not to cut the layer beneath, which is longer. I kind of go through individually and just cut the ones that look like they are a bit long. And I don't worry about it being too perfect. It's supposed to look nice and organic. If you'd like to see how I attach my cord to hang my wall hanging, watch this video next. I hope you have fun making this project. Um, if you end up posting on Instagram, don't hesitate to tag me. I'd love to see your work. Bye.